my friends, and welcome to Summit. This week, we're celebrating a solemnity. We are celebrating the ascension of the Lord. Big old feast day right here in Easter season. Not the end of Easter season, but it's in the middle of Easter season. Quick caveat, ascension, this solemnity is Ascension Thursday. That's actually the day that this happens. And for some places, some dioceses, you're going to celebrate on Thursday. You're going to have a holy day of obligation. You're going to go to Mass on Thursday. For a lot of dioceses, they move the solemnity to Sunday. So some of you out there, you're going to get Ascension Thursday on Thursday. Some of you are going to get Ascension on Sunday. And then uh, for those of you who get Ascension on Thursday, you'll get the seventh Sunday of Easter on Sunday. And for those of you who get Ascension on Sunday, well, you get Ascension on Sunday. And those are the readings we're going to dive into because this is a big, big solemnity that tells us some really cool things about Jesus. So we're going to break it on down, diving in, especially into the first reading. Let's just get started. We're still in the book of Acts, but you'll notice that we go all the way back to the beginning of the book of Acts this week. So take note of the first line. Because Luke, the physician, the writer of Acts says, in the first book, he's talking about his gospel, the gospel of Luke. Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. Who is Theophilus? Now, there's some debate about this. Some people say Theophilus is an actual person, like he's a real person that Luke was writing to. Um, Theophilus means lover of God. And um, that Luke had been charged with writing down an orderly account of all that had taken place. That's what he says. And... uh, was going to give it to this Theophilus guy. Some people say that the title is just uh, to, to anybody, the Gentiles, who love God. Do you love God? You're Theophilus. Here, this is for you so you can understand what happened in Jesus' life and then what happened in the church afterwards. Now, this is how Luke then starts off really the sequel to his gospel. He says, the disciples are gathered together and they look at Jesus and say, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Now, Later on, uh, in just a couple lines later, Jesus says, you're going to go out to all of the world. You're going to go to the ends of the earth, Samaria. Um, And here's the thing. Last week, we talked about this, right? That the gospel sends us to places that we don't expect to go. And this is why we see last week, Philip winds up in Samaria, right? This is why he goes there. Now, the disciples' first question, I think, is a really good one. Jesus says, or the disciples say, hey, are you going to restore Israel? See, they still have this narrow mindset of who Jesus was. They thought Jesus was going to come. And the first thing he's going to do is, of course, liberate people from Rome and help them be a free people. And again, it's not that the Israelites, that the Jewish people were oppressed necessarily in Rome, but they weren't free. They weren't free in the way that God wanted them to be free or that they wanted to be free as a nation. And so the first question, obviously the disciples ask, you're the Messiah. Uh, Are you going to restore Israel now? Like, are you going to, you came back, are you going to destroy Rome? And Jesus' response, he doesn't, uh, he says, you know, it's not for you to know, to know the full plan. Uh, what you need to know is what you're supposed to do right now in the moment. And in the moment, I need you to go out to the ends of the earth, to the unexpected places, which is a pretty big command. It's echoed in the gospel this week. In the gospel, Jesus, we get the end of the gospel of Matthew. And uh, this is one of my favorite passages, but it's my favorite passage for the last line because Jesus looks at his disciples and he says, go therefore and baptize um, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all I've commanded you and behold, I'm with you always even until the end of the age. So we get this moment where Jesus is looking at his disciples and he's given them what's called the Great Commission, which is echoed then at the beginning of the Gospel of Luke. But I love that last line. I'm with you always to the end of the age. What does it mean to be a disciple, to be a witness to Jesus Christ? It means doing something. There's this, uh, there's this phrase, it's attributed to St. Francis of Assisi. St. Francis of Assisi probably didn't say it, but a lot of people attributed this to him. It's, you know, it's, uh, there's variations of it. It's no use going anywhere to preach if you're walking as in your preaching or preach the gospel at all times and necessarily use words. And uh, it's kind of a cute little phrase. And uh, there's some truth to that. Like we can't be hypocritical. We can't preach the gospel and then do another thing. That's certainly part of what it means to be a witness. But we can fall into the other trap, can't we? Where we're like, well, like I'll just live a good life. I'll be a good moral example. And that way people will know Jesus through me. But it doesn't work that way. Earlier on in this Easter season, we talked about Peter saying, always be ready to give a reason for your hope. People are going to ask us, eventually why we live differently. Now, when we go into those places, when we're a witness and we live our lives differently and we preach in a certain way and we do something, Jesus says, go therefore make disciples of all nations and baptize them. That's 
a doing. He doesn't say, you know, just observe all that I've commanded you. He says, teach others to observe all that I've commanded you. But there's hope in this last piece because Jesus in the beginning of the book of Acts ascends into heaven. That's what we are talking about today. That Jesus goes up to heaven, he opens up the gates of heaven for us, he shows us where our destiny is when we are united in him. That we too, when we die, will ascend to heaven. That we will be with him eternally in paradise. But that doesn't mean that Jesus leaves us abandoned to this work now. That the work of being a witness, the work of being a disciple is not something Jesus just says, okay, like you all figure it out. He leaves, but sends the Holy Spirit to be with us. And Jesus also says, I'm with you always. I'm with you. So where you find the Holy Spirit, you find a pathway to the Trinity, you find the Son, you find the Father. But this line, I'm with you always to the end of the age, really is a reference back uh, to Jesus' abiding presence with us always. But we understand, too, to be very much sacramentally in the Eucharist, that Jesus is present with us in the Eucharist. And this is the place that sustains us. Now, some of you are saying, that's great. But right now, my diocese, uh, we're not back to Masses. And I, some of you are. Some of you maybe are going back to Mass or you're able to receive the sacraments in a unique way. But some of you are like, yeah, I can't receive the Eucharist. And even if we can't receive the Eucharist right now, it's abiding presence in the tabernacle of your church. The fact that Mass is still being celebrated means that Jesus is still with us sacramentally, but his abiding presence is with you right now. He hasn't left you. He's with you always. Notice there's not a condition on that. Jesus is like, I'm, not, I'm with you sometimes. I'm when you do good. I'm when you observe the commandments. I'm with you always. And so we go back to the beginning of the Gospel of Luke to this commission that the disciples have to go to the ends of the earth. And we talked about that last week. How do we go out to the hard places where we don't think we should be preaching the Gospel, but then we find that those are the places we're actually called into? We remember that Jesus is always with us walking to those places. And as we look at the ascension of the Lord, that as Jesus is with us now, we are going to be with Jesus as we live our discipleship well, because the part of discipleship that is key is following the Master and the master ascends to heaven, and so will we. And that's ascension of the Lord Thursday or Sunday, but however you celebrate it, know that it means heaven, it means discipleship, and it means being a witness to share that gift with other folks. And the reality that Jesus, as he ascends to heaven, is still present with us sacramentally and in a powerful, abiding way through his spirit. So, my brothers and sisters, God bless you this week. Enjoy Ascension Week, and I'll see you back here next week on Summit.